Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we will learn how to read and process user input. In order to do this we utilize the help of the Scanner class. The Scanner class is going to be the foundation for the big project that I want to do with you guys. Because in the near future I want to write a light version of a calculator and implement a lot of the things that we have learned so far. So in this tutorial we are going to write a really simple program so I can show you the concept and later on we will move on to bigger things. So for starters let's write a program that allows us to write our name and age and treat that as data. And then we can operate on this like we usually do. Let's create the necessary variables first. These are the variables that we want to use but right now they are not initialized and therefore of no use to us. They merely serve as containers in which we restore our external data. And in order to get this external data we need to create a scanner. A scanner is a class and is such a complex data type. It comes bundled with a lot of functionality that we need for our purpose. Here is how we would create one. As you can see, it's not much different from what we usually do. You will notice though that we're getting an error, so let's have a look at that. It says that the scanner cannot be resolved to a type, and this is because the scanner class itself, where all the mechanisms for the functionality are stored, is not part of our project. The class is stored somewhere within Java and we just want to make use of it. And for that we need to import the scanner class from the Java packages. Fortunately Eclipse makes this pretty easy for us. Just by clicking on this first item, import scanner, right here, it does the work for us. And you will notice that up here, it generates this line of code which tells the program to import the scanner class. The error on the left hand side has been resolved, but there's still a problem right here. It says that the constructor scanner is undefined. And here's where you have to excuse me because this is a class related concept and we won't be talking about that for a while. All I can tell you for now is that when we create an instance of a class like we're doing right here, we can sometimes specify the creation process a little more. And in the case of the scanner, this is actually required. If you don't know what I mean by instance, it is this part right here. When we are creating variables of a class, we are talking about instances. We now want to specify this instance, my scanner, to read an input from the user. And we do this by typing in the following into the constructor. System.in So contrary to when we want to put something out to the user and write system out, we now want to take input from the user by using system in. Let's look at this again as a whole. If we want to make use of the scanner class, we first need to import it. We then specify the data type and the name like usual and assign a value to this with the mysterious new operator. Like with erase before, this allocates memory in a specific way. Then we call the so-called constructor of the class, which has the same name as the class itself, and use a specific parameter, system in, to be able to read an input from the user. And when we are talking about variables of an object, the correct term is an instance. So now we want to use the scanner to get the name and age of the user. First of all, let's print out a message that tells the user what he needs to do. We have to keep in mind that we can only fill one of our variables at a time. So let's begin with the name. After this message has been printed out, we want to store the next input from the user into our string variable. And we do this by using a so-called method of the scanner class. So what we do is we take our myScanner instance and by using the dot after its name we get access to its functionality. If I were to take this away 
Eclipse would show us all the methods that we have access to, and the one we need right now is the next method. Each method comes with a description and tells you what it does. There's a whole section revolving around methods alone, so for now, please just accept the fact that I'm telling you which methods you need to use. The next thing we're going to ask the user is to put in his age. And for this, we're using a slightly different method of the scanner. Why? Because if we just use the next method, the input we will get will be read as a string, which matches with our variable because name is a string. By using the next int method, however, the input we will get will be treated as an integer. This is important because age is an integer and can't hold a value like a string. Now that we're done getting the data, we could then present them to the user. So let's go ahead and run this program. We get our prompt, please enter your name. In the code, we are at this part right here. By using the next method, we stop the program until it gets some form of input. So let's type in our name. And if we hit enter, we proceed. Then we get to our next prompt and again the program is stopped. So let's put in our age. And as you can see, we successfully recorded data and were able to use it in our program. Once we are getting name and age from the user, we can of course perform operations on them like usual. We could change their values, use them in an if statement or even in a loop. But there are a few things to watch out for when using a scanner. Let's run this program again. Let's say I want to enter my full name and I'm just gonna put in something stupid like orange kid. We will get a huge error, everything is burning and our program terminates. So what is going on? Before the program terminated, we were at this line. Now, the next method only takes in the next token that we put in. And tokens are separated by white spaces. So when we put in the name orange kid, we only actually read in orange and stored that within the name variable. The program then moves on to this line and expects an integer because we call the method next int. However, since we still haven't done anything to the kid token and it is the next token in line after orange, it then tries to store kid with an age. And as I said before, this is not possible because age only takes in integers whereas kid is a string. This is why we were getting an input mismatch exception, because the input wasn't correct. We cannot store a string within an integer. So when you read in data and want to store it inside of variables, you absolutely have to make sure that the data type is correct. Now there's an easy way to solve the name problem. Instead of just asking for the next token, we could store the entire line. And we do have the method for that. Creatively enough, it's called next line. So if we run this program again, we enter our name, orange kid, we won't get an error because now orange kid, the entire line, is stored within name. And we get the correct output. Now of course with strings, we could also put in numbers because they are just symbols and get treated as text. So if I were to do this, Apple kid is much cooler anyway, our name would be Apple kid 123 If we store numbers within strings, it's important to know that we won't be able to operate on them like real numbers. We would have to extract them first in order to be able to process them later on. But we won't learn that today, because this is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, 
feel free to put them in the comments, and I'll be happy to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. See you next time!